All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and call the City Council workshop to order for Tuesday, May 1st, first of the month. And let the record show that uh, the entire council, with the exception of Mr. Johnson, who is not here yet, I haven't heard whether he's going to be here or not, so maybe he'll come in, is present. So with that, we're first thing on our agenda is our DS items. DS 18-035, discuss agenda items for the regular City Council meeting of May 8, 2018. And the first thing on there is our minutes, MN 18-009, consider minutes of regular City Council meeting of April 24, 2018. Any questions or comments on those? All right, seeing none, we're going to move on to our resolutions, RS 18-031. Consider memorandum resolution authorizing the procurement of fleet tires. And Mr. Locke, welcome. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. This, is, this item is for the purchase of tires for all of the city's fleet. Fleet Services purchases the tires for all city fleet, and then the costs are charged to departments as the tires are used. Over the past two fiscal years, the annual cost of tires has been from $220,000 to $226,000 per year. We're estimating that in FY18, the cost will be $221,600. We have um, compared pricing from three different vendors on cooperative agreements, and Southern Tire Mart offered the best pricing utilizing the interlocking purchasing agreement system and the Texas Association of School Boards by Board Purchasing Cooperative. Staff recommends that City Council approve to purchase tires from Southern Tire Mart in the amount of 221600 utilizing the lower of the interlocking purchasing system or the Texas Association of School Boards by Board Cooperative pricing and that the city manager or designee be authorized to execute any change orders as permitted by state and local law. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions? <coughs> All right, seeing none, we're just gonna go ahead and move on to our next item, RS 18-032. Consider memorandum resolution authorizing the Solid Waste Division to purchase containers for the City of Colleen Solid Waste Collection System. Mr. Olson, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is an item that we typically do in uh, November of any given year. Uh, the City of Colleen is a container-dependent solid waste collection system. This means that we have carts and dumpsters that are necessary to collect refuse. Uh, as the division, solid waste is required to maintain an inventory of containers, uh, as well as any lids, wheels, or other appurtenances that may be required to repair those containers to accommodate for growth and uh, lost or damaged containers. Uh, solid waste container shop maintains those, those containers as they can and we replace as they become no longer feasible to maintain. Each fiscal year approximately three to five truckloads are necessary uh, for residential containers and uh, just as an average we, we issue out about 250 containers per month. <clears throat> This particular fiscal year, these purchases have been delayed and we've been working off of uh, residual containers drawing down our inventory. We're getting very near to the bottom end of our inventory and we have about a one to two month supply left in stock. <coughs> what you see on this slide is not the three <coughs> options that we carry. These are 32 gallon, 64 gallon, and 96 gallon from left to right. Uh, there have been approximately 3,500 new accounts established between fiscal year 15 and 17. And uh, as of March of 18, there's already been 666 new residential accounts. What you see here is a before and after of a refurbished uh, commercial dumpster. You see there's still a little bit of repair left. They have to put the grapple uh, connections on the side of this one, but this is, uh, we typically replace the bottoms on these dumpsters as they rot out with the uh, the liquids that stay in the bottom of that dumpster over time. City staff is recommending that we procure carts and dumpster supplies from Toter Incorporated. The amount of the anticipated purchase for the year is uh, approximately 163000 These are budgeted funds and uh, staff is recommending that we authorize the city manager to make those procurements. They will be made in uh, truckloads at a time 
truckloads approximately $30,000, and at this time we're anticipating the need for uh, one, one truckload of residential carts, and then others will be procured as necessary. Happy to answer any questions you have. Questions? All right, very good. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Thank you. Next is RS 18-033, consider memorandum resolution entering into an interlocal agreement for mutual access to the Cloud Library Digital System. Mrs. Hinkle, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. This is an exciting agenda item for library services. It's uh, gonna provide some additional digital resources for our patrons. So the Clean Library Services provides currently about 7,500 titles for eBooks and downloadable audiobooks. The Cloud Link is an online service that provides a much broader range of those materials in excess of 43,000 uh, titles. And the cloud library just means that that's where all of the library content that is uploaded um, is shared between the libraries and their patrons. So the interlocal agreement does allow mutual access to the cloud library digital resources through the cloud link service and the members there are outlined for you on the screen. There are several Texas cities and a couple of counties for you. Um, the alternatives would be to not join and that would reduce the, the number of books by at least 75 percent. And of course, joining the cloud link would increase and provide a much broader range of downloadable items for our patrons. The financial impact, there is an annual fee of $1,000, which is included in our budget. And there is also a commitment to spend $10,000 annually on new materials, and that is also included in the new book budget for the library. The initial term of the agreement is 10 years, and it can be renewed. Um, this does increase the titles available to all library patrons by over 500%, and staff recommends that the city manager be authorized to execute the interlocal agreement. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Kilpatrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Ms. Hinkle, the, uh, the selection of books, are those widely dispersed amongst all age groups? Uh, you say 43,000. Um, are those, uh, and I'm, I'm more concerned right now about the uh, uh, books that would be from zero to five year old groups. Yes. There, there would be a, a opportunity for those uh, parents to check those books uh, as well as teenagers and above. Absolutely. But, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mrs. Nash King. Thank you, sir. Um, Ms. Shink. I think you're doing an excellent job. I think that is allowing our uh, residents the opportunity to have a, a selection of a variety of different types of books uh, at their exposure. So I thank you and the library staff for all the awesome work that you continue to do every day. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll pass those remarks to them. They deserve Mr. Credit. Rivera. I echo what Ms. King said, but I got a question. This 10 year term, is there an increase within those 10 years or just stay steady at those 10 years level? It's level and there is a termination clause if we do, um, if for some reason there is an increase, we can terminate within 60 is, is days. Those, is those 10 years in the industry, is those 10 years normal, 10 year? I'm looking at my library director for an answer. Yes. It is normal to have about 10 years term? Well, it's for that particular company, yes. But in, in the industry per se? Uh, it's fairly new to the industry. There's two major services, and this is the only one offering this particular version to libraries our size, so with only one vendor that does it. <laughs> that's not true. Yes. I think the answer Mr. is yes. Yes, thank you, Mr. I, I think this is great. We're a long way from yep. two years ago when we were talking about shutting libraries down. Hmm. Now we're talking, this is great. It is. And, 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 and the technology, you can literally have a library in your pocket these days. I got, I, Max, Max, I have an extensive Kindle collection myself. 
haven't read anything, everything in there yet, but it's, you know, the potential is there. Haven't had a chance to read them all. But this is just great. Um, learning is always great. I, I figured I was, I didn't know why I was wearing red today. But <laughs> I'm wearing red because that, that's, uh, that's, that, that's for, uh, for, for, for education. So this is great. All right, Mrs. And, Fleming. Yes, I just have one question. I also echo that you're doing a fantastic job, as you always have. What my only my only question is is I just have one question. Uh, over the period of of the books, are they going to be like renewed and updated every year? Yes. And everything. Yes. So new titles are added each year as new books are published. Okay. Is it automatically done, or does the parents come in and help select, and the teachers as well? How does that process work? I'm going to defer to the end. With print books, our staff reviews and selects using the standard review tools. So, uh, and they're reviewed by librarians and staff. There are several major publications for libraries to help us select. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Well, Ms. Hinkle, that great job. I, I think uh, the council, I, 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 you know, with all the accolades that you received from the council, I think that they're very happy with everything that you did. So. I appreciate staff. it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. All right, moving on to uh, RS 18-034, consider memorandum resolution deny Encore Electric Delivery Company LLC application for approval of a distribution cost recovery factor. And for the record, let the record show that Mr. Johnson is present. And with that, Mrs. Davis. Thank you, Mayor. I know you're used to hearing me up here speak about the um, applications for rate increase for Atmos and natural gas. So this is a similar process, but here we're tonight we're here to talk about electric rates. So just as the city has regulatory authority for natural gas rates, it also has regulatory authority for the charges of electricity distribution within its boundaries. The city is also a member of a steering committee of cities served by Encore, which is a group of cities that join together to review and respond to electric issues. On April 5th of this year, Encore filed an application for approval of a distribution cost recovery factor seeking a $19 million increase in distribution revenues for its service area. This equates to a 28 cent increase on the average monthly bill, which is a 6% increase on the transmission charges. The Public Utility Commission rules allow 60 days for cities to act on the application, which is not sufficient time to fully review and negotiate. If the cities deny the request, Encore will assuredly appeal to the PUC. You have two alternatives tonight. Your first is to find the increase unreasonable, deny the application, and authorize the city to participate with the steering committee in any appeal before the PUC. Rates will remain the same pending the PUC's final decision. Or, council, you can approve the application and allow the increased rates to become effective. Staff and the steering committee attorneys recommend finding that the rate increase is unreasonable and denying the application, which will allow for negotiation with Encore while participating in its appeal. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Mr. Snash King. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think that it would be in our best interest if we would negotiate instead of just taking that a rate for all the residents, I think we should see what if we can lower that rate before we go into an agreement. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think that's that's the recommendation, right, Mrs. Yes. So everybody's how okay long, with that. How long will the process take? Do you know? I don't know for sure. If I think it will be similar as the one we go through with natural gas, which takes um, just a few months, maybe two to three months. It also depends upon um, how well the two entities work together. And we haven't dealt with electric as much, so we don't have as much familiarity. But um, I don't anticipate that it would take longer than just a few months. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Anybody else? Mrs. O Mr. Oakry. Mr. Harris. I was going to ask a question. Um, do you know whether or not Encore uh, operates on a like kind of a est an estimation model? Because I know I was um, looking at Atmos, and um, actually I was, when I was out of town, you know, I read an article and I read it last night again about how Atmos works on an estimating system, and how they actually actually came back just recently and played catch up, if you will, mm -hmm. and people's bills were <laughs> right. very very high. 
Uh, do they work in that type of system as well, or how do they work? This is actually the transmission piece, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you all remember 10 or 12 years ago, the retail electric business was broken down into three pieces. Right. You've got the generation, the transmission, and the retail sales. This is actually the transmission piece of it, so it doesn't have to do with the actual usage in each individual home. So I don't believe that it's based upon a um, any sort of an estimation, and that's why they've able, been able to tell us that the rate is a 6% increase and it is a 28 cent increase because it is a set charge okay. and I will verify just and if it is something different than what I've just told you I'll be sure and let you know next week okay thank you ma'am you're welcome mr. Okri this was a uh, is this the same uh, I believe it was last year around this time it was we, we had a was it electrical was it electric last year because no, we haven't had an electric okay, case in, in many years. We've had several gas. natural gas, yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, anybody else? All right, thank you, Ms. Davis. And now we're going to move on to our public hearings, PH 18-007. Hold a public hearing and consider an ordinance requested by Arcade News, Inc., case number Z 18-04, to rezone, a pro rezone part of lot one block one west side commercial subdivision from rc1 to restaurant and alcohol sales district to b3a local business and retail alcohol <coughs> sales district to allow for package store sales <coughs> this property is located <coughs> at 1200 willow springs road suite a in colleen mr McElwain, welcome yes. good evening mayor and council this uh, location 1200 willow springs road is a vacant lease space it was formerly a shipley donuts business there the property owner um, has received some interest from another entity and that interest is for a package store currently the entire building is zoned to allow for on-premises alcohol sales and consumption uh, it's zoned rc1 uh, this entity is requesting b3a to put the package store in uh, the lease area where the shipley donuts location was uh, the property is general commercial on a future land use map, and this yellow box approximates the amount of area in the lease space that uh, we anticipate the package store occupying. Uh, this CUP is basically an old zoning designation. It was basically a combination of different commercial uses, and it's referred to as community unit plan from back then. In our due diligence for the case, uh, we notified two surrounding property owners who received no responses. Uh, we also did uh, an analysis to make sure that there were no schools, hospitals, or churches within uh, 300 feet of the site. There are none. It's a recommendation of the PNZ for approval of uh, the B3A, and this would only be for uh, that lease space. The rest of the building will stay uh, zoned to allow for restaurant uses. Uh, we do anticipate some interior remodeling work to be done uh, because it's an open area right now, but they're going to enclose that <coughs> prior to <coughs> us uh, approving any kind of TABC license if it's approved. And I'll answer any questions that you have. Questions? None. All right, moving on. PH 18-008. Hold a public hearing and consider an ordinance requested by AP Colleen Limited Partnership. Anthony Properties, case number Z18-05, to rezone part of Lot 1, Block 1, Anthony Development Edition from B5 Business District to BC1 General Business and Alcohol Sale District to allow for alcohol beverage service in the conjunction with a movie theater. This property is located at 2501 East Central Texas Expressway in Colleen. Mr. McElwain. Yes, uh, Mayor and Council, this is the Regal Colleen Stadium 14 location. Uh, in an effort to remain competitive with other um, movie houses in our sister cities, uh, the landlord and Regal Cinemas are interested in rezoning uh, the footprint of the movie theater from a B5 to BC1. Uh, the BC1 zoning district, as you all know, allows you to do on-premises sales and consumption of beer, wine, and mixed beverages. Uh, the property is in an area designated for general commercial use, and once again, we've highlighted <clears throat> the location of the existing theater. This site is uh, occupied now with another uh, building, but the zoning that they're requesting is only for uh, the uh, interior space of the, uh, of the movie theater. 
we notified four surrounding property owners. We received one response uh, in support uh, that was by uh, a commercial entity that uh, owns some of the adjacent property. The recommendation of the uh, PNZ uh, is uh, for approval. This is by a vote of five to zero. And I'd like to answer any questions that you have. Mr. Oakery. That's a smart business move because the demand is there. But they're going to have food too or besides the popcorn and stuff? Some for us, do you know anything details like that where you can go to movies now? You can get a full meal at right. the movie. They did not disclose whether or not they were going toward that. There was some discussion about um, whether or not they would pull a food and beverage permit with a TVC license. I don't think that's something they are ready to do quite yet. Uh, but they are fairly excited, and um, you know, we they may mention you know Copper's Cove, Harker Heights, Temple. They're already doing this, and they're trying to remain competitive. That's a bit smart business move. Thank you. I like the recliners. They put recliners in there, and those are nice. So it's right across you from my house. I can drink and just walk home. <laughs> you know, that's kind of cool. <laughs> Shame on me. We'll, we'll delete that. All right. All right. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Mr. McElwain. Well, Council, that was a quick meeting, and that was our last item. So, is it, unless anybody else got anything, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I've got to run to the front. Oh man, I thought we were done. Next item is DS 18-036, discuss agenda items for Joint Council and KISD meeting, and that's my item. Uh, the city manager, when we had our meeting last week, uh, he wanted me to. Uh, uh, kind of come up with an agenda of what we were going to discuss, and I thought it'd be better instead of just me coming up with the agenda, I bring it forward to the city council member and have any suggestions that you might think of. Uh, when I started on a little piece of scratch paper, uh, just to kind of give you an idea, a couple of things that I had thought, I know that it's big, our infrastructure, if that bond money, that bond program does pass, I think that's probably a big priority. You know, that's a discussion item that we got to discuss. Uh, discuss with them. And then the other thing I thought is, you know, how our KPD work with uh, KIST uh, Police Department, because I know a lot of concerns for for the citizens is, is um, you know, activities, maybe, you know, kids doing uh, not so good things around the schools and stuff, and how that partnership is working with our KPD. And so, but if there's anything else that you guys want to see on the agenda, uh, I'm just going to open up the floor, Mrs. Fleming. Yes, uh, I, I don't know if this is, would be feasible or no, no, not, but uh, on the 26th, we had a sex um, trafficking meeting, and I would like to hear more about that, maybe put something like that on the agenda so that we can work more with the citizens and the police department because that is safety and quality of life, and we do need to address that here in the community a little bit more, so I would like to see that. You and want it on the agenda, or you want it as a discussion item for with the school board? With well, the, for the school board and, and the community as well. Okay, yeah. Cause Overall, we can, okay. however, we can get it there to involve everybody. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we thank can, you. We can put that as an item there on for the school. Okay. Thank you. Um, one of the things, joint partnerships, when it comes to summer programs, that we can work together, utilize their facilities for like. Oh, well, that's a real good one. Summer programs, like their basketball courts and things like that. Well, they also can do volleyball. They also have a softball field of just how we can work together yeah. to have more activities for our youth in the summer. Okay. Mr. Oakery. Yes, um, I think a discussion was the sidewalks uh, tr to and from schools within the neighborhoods. Adding more sidewalks? Yes, adding more sidewalks. Add sidewalks. That's a good one. Mr. Kilpatrick. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I had a wonderful opportunity last week to represent the mayor in the city at a uh, seminar in uh, Fort Worth on early childhood development, zero to uh, uh, three and then zero to five. Uh, it's a statewide initiative with the mayor of the largest 25 cities in Texas to uh, establish task force uh, amongst the uh, uh, multiple multiple uh, areas, the higher education, the K, the ISDs, 
the uh, Workforce Commission and uh, uh, private learning centers uh, to work toward a policies uh, that uh, municipalities would have along in conjunction with the KISDs uh, or the ISDs to uh, uh, formulate for our, our state legislature uh, of getting a sufficient funding down. Right now, the only w way this is uh, identified and covered is by CD CDBG grants. Um, and I think that would be an excellent opportunity for us to be able to have our, our task force, which is the uh, City of Clean, the uh, Texas A&M Central Texas, uh, CTC, the uh, workforce, um, to, uh, to give a, uh, a discussion between the two bodies uh, to carry forward what we would like to uh, uh, see come, come about uh, in this extremely important uh, area, especially in state funding. State offers no fundings other than passing down the uh, federally funded CDBGs. And last year they cut out about uh, eight and a half million, uh, eighty million dollars out of the budget uh, that was de don't, uh, dictated for that. And so, uh, so the agenda item would be CDBG funds. Is that no, the agenda item would be uh, early childhood <coughs> uh, education zero to three, zero to five. And, and we would. Okay, I think you're going to have to clarify that for our attorney because you got to make the agenda, right? So, I don't, because you mentioned a presentation from CTC. Of ta t the task, task force, force for early childhood. So, so the agenda would be asking them to do a task force, maybe join us in a task force. They're, they're going to be, they're going to be joined in a task force, but brief the two, two bodies, the council and the, uh, the, the ISD board okay. on this, uh, this program and, and the, and the person the, doing that briefing would be who again? Um, uh, sir, that would either be you or I. Oh, I think it's going to be you. Because <laughs> you were there. <laughs> so that's good. I like that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anybody? Mr. Johnson. Just uh, two. Uh, one, if we can talk about how we can better coordinate the school district's uh, CIP projects especially the schools being built. And I think Councilman Oakray touched on that a little bit. He talked about the sidewalks. Uh, we, we still have that issue on Mohawk and Bunny Trail. And I always feel like the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. The left hand being the city of Clean, the right hand being the KISD. And we still have a couple of issues. I have to actually have a citizen here, Gladys, that would like to speak for 60 seconds if she could. She's having an issue uh, with Reese's Creek. Uh, there was a, a couple of council members have been out there. Uh, there's a, James Loop, uh, and there's a side entrance to the school that, that uh, Reese's Creek has where students can walk through the neighborhood, but parents are using it as a pickup, and it's causing uh, all kind of concerns within the neighborhoods, and I see that as a lack of communication, but uh, I don't know too much about it, but I was going to see if the council would yield and give her two minutes to speak, mm -hmm. just so they can better understand the concern. Okay. I, I don't know. Mr. Kilpatrick. Mr. Mayor, I totally agree with uh, the Councilman Johnson. We have been out there several times. It is a joint uh, uh, issue. It's an issue with the independent school district as far as uh, pick up and drop off for uh, parking, uh, whether it's sufficient or not. And then there's an issue with uh, public parking where uh, citizens choose to uh, park in a residential area yeah. while waiting and we have the issue of uh, can, as long as they're not blocking a driveway, as long as they're not blocking a fire hydrant or as long as they're not blocking a, uh, a mailbox, uh, you have, have the uh, right to park where you want to. Well, that also is creating nuisances and everything. I've been out there three times on three different occasions. We've had one meeting with uh, the ISD last year at the Reese's Creek. Uh, it, it, it continues to be an area of, of interest. I think it's going to be also uh, continue to be an area of, of uh, 
conflict at any school that is developed on a major thoroughfare uh, like Stan Sluter. Okay. Um, and, and as we do Chaparral, uh, well, place in a high school and elementary school on, on Chaparral, we can put a five lane all we want to, but if we don't have sufficient on, on ramp and off ramp parking for, we'll have an issue. And I, I, well, we don't have that as an agenda item because we're just stuck discussing to build an agenda, but we definitely can put it as an agenda. And I know exactly because I've been to our house, but uh, I don't think we can do that. You know, Is there a way to get all right, the citizen to Are we in violation if we allow something that's not on the agenda? Uh, I think as long as you're tying it in to the fact that you're trying to create a discussion item for the school board. As long as we're not in violation of anything, we're okay. So that's yes. the attorney's advice. Yeah. Okay, you got it. So you got like three minutes. I appreciate the time. Our main concern is the fact that they are blocking driveways and it's a consistency. Uh, when we residents try to start impeding our normal flow, but when we politely try to ask them to please move because we're trying, it's impeding our way of life. Ms. Mayor, so, could she pass those around so we could see them, mm -hmm. please? We have taken, uh, this has been ongoing since 2014. One of the, I guess, reasons that we were giving at the time is that Texas DOT actually blocked the front uh, of Reese's Creek Elementary and they put some concrete barriers that parents used to go there. Well, they resolved that, they expanded the actual parking lot of Reese's Creek Elementary. What is this happening is, Parents choose to not go to the official parent pickup and drop off, and they're actually parking, going inside our residential area, parking in front of our houses, and from 6.30 in the morning, just doing a, what we like to call it, Congo line, dropping each kid in front of the actual walkway, which is supposed to be pedestrian only for the kids that live in Jane's Way. Also, we have parents coming all the way from Tremier Estates when it got adjacent to ours because they don't have a walkway on their own. Their developer did not make a walkway for Tremier Estates. Therefore, people from Tremier Estates are going through the neighborhood, not through the long way, according to them. There will be uh, through the 195, then stand through the loop to get to the actual parent dip pickup and they're actually parking in front of us. Just imagine people lining up each side, parking, parents parking on each side, plus the parents that are trying to go through and us residents block in the middle. So that's what we're trying to do. Thank you so much. All right, well, thank you. And uh, your, your area always comes to mind when I talk about that because I've been out there and I know exactly what you're talking about. So that's one of the things that uh, will be part of the discussion when we discuss the infrastructure because a lot of times when they're building a new school, they don't take that into consideration, the, the, the people that live around that. And so that's something that we really have to reevaluate. Mr. Just Johnson. A, thank you. Just a third one. A citizen sent me a message on Facebook. Uh, she was asked in, could we develop a comprehensive active shooter protocol? Is that again. a discussion item that we want to talk about at the public schools or yes. the forums? So we'll just put, is that something you want to bring on? Okay. As long as you bring it on, we're good. Now remember, uh, uh, how much time do we, are we doing this in conjunction? We're not doing this in conjunction with a meeting. So it's a special day. We're going to have a special day. I think it's a, uh, Wednesday. So depending on how much time we have on there, you know, we'll, we'll decide what time we start. So we, if we have to, too much stuff, then what I'll do is I'll, we'll just have to change the time. So Mr. Harris. Um, yes, I would like to put on there um, regular, joint, the regular joint meetings with them. And I'll just say once, like once a quarter. Because joint meetings would be a great time. If we, if we have complaints from citizens about stuff, that would be a great time to come together and say, okay, this is what we're hearing on our side, and what can you do to help and so forth and things like that. So it would be, be very informational for us. 
as well as very informative for them as, as well. Uh, the next thing, um, lighting, lighting around the schools, uh, the school road and, and there were intersections, like I was talking about on uh, Bunny Trail where Smith is, <clears throat> that, 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 that road right there, completely dark, where the kids are walking, completely dark, and no light on the corner to provide anything. It's just a completely dark area when, the, when, when you have the fall. And so um, I think uh, lighting around the schools in, on, intersection, on the corners of intersections or roads would be a great discussion item as well. All right. Mrs. Nash King. Mr. Mayor, I have a recommendation. Uh, if we're going to talk about active shooters or we're going to talk about uh, KISD policing, we need at least experts like our police chief, KISD police chief, if we're going to discuss those items. Okay. That's well, just a we recommendation. Can, we can do that. Thank you. What else? <laughs> All right, so when we create this agenda, we'll kind of figure out how long it'll take and what time we need to start, maybe like 10 o'clock in the morning. Mayor, keep in, keep in mind that the KISD board will also be asked for items that they may want to yeah. put on here, so we're only hearing half the story here probably. So oh, maybe point. like 7 in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> how about 6? <six>, <laughs> there you go. We got it. We can do it. We can do it at the it. Movie, movie theater. They have good seats. All right. And I think that's it. If nobody else have any questions, I think we're done. So we just need a motion by Ms. Nash King, second by Mrs. Fleming to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning, just say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.